Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. If you have watched any of my videos, you've seen me use a shooting board. Most important shop made implement you can get. If you haven't figured out how to use it, I'm going to show you how to use a shooting board. Stay tuned. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the notification bell so you'll receive alerts when we release a new video. And anytime we use a special tool, we'll always leave a description down below. All right, let's get to work. Its primary function is to square a board both in this direction and in this direction. Now in order to do that, there's certain things about your shooting board that have to be in check. Well, let's start with them. First, you need a surface that is nice and flat to hold your workpiece. You don't want your board rocking. Then you need an area sitting lower that is also flat that holds your plane and as it too must be parallel to this surface. You wouldn't want that tip one way or the other. Your fence needs to be securely held and it also needs to be perfectly square. So how do you check it? Well, the easiest way is to put your plane in place tight against the rail Put your steel square in there and check it. Now, if you want to get really accurate, get yourself a feeler gauge. This is a thou and a half. Put that in, and it's snug there, and it's snug there. So I know that's within a thou and a half. Might even be better than that. You have a cleat in the front, and the cleat is just there to secure the board, the shooting board against the front of your bench so it doesn't move when you're using it. I often like to put a clamp back here to hold that securely so as I'm using the shooting board it doesn't move at all. And of course your fence needs to be made out of a really strong material because it takes a fair bit of abuse. So as long as you have that, you should be able to get that shooting board to work perfectly so that your work will be that much better. If you're going to use a shooting board, you have to have a good plane. It has to be sharp and it has to have square sides. Now, I prefer to use my five and a half. And the reason is because it's long enough and heavy enough to be really good on the shooting board, yet it's not so big and cumbersome as to be a great plane for general purpose on the bench. If I can get one plane to do both functions, that's a little less clutter on my bench. They do make specialty planes just for shooting boards. I think your money's better spent elsewhere. Five and a half works fantastic and has never left me wanting for anything different when I use a shooting board and I use it a lot. One feature about your plane you must have is the sides must be square to the sole. So in position, take your square and move that into place and that shouldn't show any light. And if you wanna be even more specific, you can again use your, your uh, feeler gauge to go in there and check it. Now, if it's out a slight amount, you can compensate for that by simply using your lateral adjustment lever. If I pull this up, then the blade is going to pivot like that and take a heavier cut on the bottom than it is on the top. If I push it down, it does the opposite. It'll take a heavier cut on the top than it does on the bottom. So you can tweak it to get it just perfect, as long as you're close on the sides to the sole. Okay, let's square the edge of a board, the end of a board, with a shooting board. This is the primary function of this tool. In order to do that, we have to have a straight edge up against that fence. If it isn't, it's going to rock like this and it's very irritating. Before we do anything, we have to know how to hold the plane and make sure it's set up properly. And I will say this, I get asked to troubleshoot with shooting board problems for folks all the time, and I would guess and say nine times out of ten, it's a result of a blade that is not properly sharpened. If you consider there's three surfaces on this board, that, or three types of surfaces, there's the face grain, there's the edge, and there's the end. Of those three, this is the toughest one. The blade needs to be the sharpest to tackle this. So make sure your blade is sharp. If not, check that video again and try it a second time. All right, how do we hold the plane? Well, it really wasn't well thought out when it came to using planes on their side. There isn't a great spot to hold your hand. So what I do is, number one, I keep the, uh, I grab hold of it at the narrowest, the, pardon me, the widest spot, which is right here. I use this triangular area to take this part of my palm and kind of stick it in there, and it gives me something to push against. My fingers wrap around the underside here, my thumbs on the backside, and you have to keep that from tipping. 
So you want to concentrate and keep the force right down through the middle of the plane. You never want it to tip out or to tip forward. You also have to keep it tight to this rail. If you allow it to drift away, you're going to lose your square setup. So what you're doing, keeping it standing plumb, you're keeping it tight to the fence, you're moving it forward, you're pulling it back. It is nice to be able to have a run at the board, meaning get the plane moving before the blade gets bogged down in the wood. You can't start back here. There's, you'd most likely end up hitting the edge of the board and leaving a big dent in it. So you have to be engaged with the sole. Of course, the farther away you get, the more of a run you get. Now I'll get that, I'll hit that, and I wanna carry that blade all the way through. By the way, when we designed this shooting board, we pulled the fence, which typically was back here, forward a few inches. What I found when students were first learning, if the fence was back here, in the process of pushing the plane this way, they'd be spinning around at the end. This way, with the fence pulled forward, you still have some track, keeping that moving in a nice straight line. Okay, so we've got that covered. Now we need to get a nice straight edge to go up against the fence. So I can use my shooting board to do that. However, all it's really doing is acting as a stop to keep the board from sliding forward, but it is keeping the board and the plane square this way. However, because of the amount of surface area we have here compared to here, that's not very effective in squaring. So all I'm going to do is push with my opposite hand directly against the board right across from the blade. And I'll actually use the sole of the plane to straighten this edge. So, like so. Watching to make sure that the board is fully engaged with the plane over its entire length. Do it a couple of times so I know I'm getting a full length pass. Now I can take that and set it against the fence and it'll be nice and secure. Now, before we start, we've got to remember, we have to keep the plane tight to the rail or to the edge of the board. We have to keep the board fed into the plane or else it'll stop cutting. However, if you push harder this way than you're pushing the plane that way, you're gonna lose your square setup. So this one has to trump, this one not as much force. If I were to plane just like this, watch what happens. I need a little more blade. Out here in the end, you start to get these fibers breaking off like that. Well, on a finished piece of wood, that's terrible. So what we'll do, this is the side that we're going to put against the fence. I've flipped it over, and the first thing I'm gonna do is pull it away from the fence back here about an eighth of an inch. And I'm gonna come in, and I'm gonna cut a little chamfer right here. I'm actually gonna make that just a little bit deeper. Flip it over. Now, that produces a little gap right here. And that's going to allow me to plane that end now, if I stop short, I've got a, still got a chamfer on there. If I go too far, I blow past the chamfer and I go back to having tear out. What I need to do is stop just before the chamfer ends. And you can usually see it as a little spot where one, one plane meets the second plane. I can go one more time. Actually, I went a little bit too far. You see those fibers breaking off? Now, the only way to get rid of that is to either make your board narrower by going in and cleaning that up or taking more off this way. And the, la the first one is probably the easier one to do. So remember, plane must stand plumb, keep it tight to the side of the shooting board, keep this board fed into the plane but not pushing harder than you're pushing your plane this way. You also wanna keep it flat on your shooting board. You don't want it sitting up like that in order to get a square set up this way, this must remain tight against the shooting board. The plane action will keep it tight to the fence so you don't have to worry too much about that. Okay, time to troubleshoot. Let's check this. Now, this is the face that was against the shooting board, so this is the one we wanted to check the end. If I were to see that that's out of square at all, this is what we would do. If if it was high here, meaning the board was looking like this, then what I need to do is take more off the bottom than the top. So I would come in here like this, and I would grab hold of my lateral adjustment lever, 
I actually push down on the blade while pulling up on the lateral adjustment lever. And what that will do is that will ever so slightly tilt the blade so that more is kicking out the bottom or showing the bottom than the top. Go back in. Cut my little chamfer, I got a little too much blade there. And then plane that again. Go in and check. And if it's good, we're done. If it's not, further correction. If I was showing that it was more at the top, in other words, it was in the opposite direction, it was sticking out more here than down the bottom, then I would simply go in and I would pull up on my blade, push down on my lateral adjustment lever, pivoting the blade like this. Again, don't forget to cut that little chamfer. A little more blade. Flip it over, come in. Watch the little gap right here. It'll eventually disappear. And just before it disappears where you want to stop, go in and check with your plane or your square. And if it's good, we're done. Now, if it was at a square in this direction, and this is the edge that we put against the fence, so this is the one we're going to check against. If that isn't perfectly square, then I would suggest either our technique was wrong or our fence was not square to our plane. First thing I would do is go in and check that. And if that checks out, well then we had a problem with our technique. Maybe we had some debris in there. Maybe we weren't holding it securely in place. Do it again and check. If sometimes you actually purposely have to have this slightly out of square in order to fit, what you can do is take, this, this is a great handy little tool, you can take a shim and you can set it in here which would purposely hold that out and allow you to do whatever you need to in terms of a slight angle on the end of the board. Or you can turn it this way to do it in the opposite direction. Okay, when you're building something, particularly drawers, and you have to have that board a precise length, always best to use a knife. And you're gonna go in there and you're going to score a line across the board. Now what I would do, come in and cut my little chamfer. Just check and make sure that this blade is parallel to the sole. Make sure you don't have any debris. Every once in a while, you've got to come in and just clean that stuff out of there. You don't want anything preventing that plane from sitting in there perfectly flush up against that track. Come in here and make my little chamfer and I'm going to chamfer right to that line. If you want to, what you can do is take that and roll it over onto the, this edge so that I can see that from here. Now flip it over, and as I start to plane, this is where I like to have some magnifiers so I can see it even better. But as I get closer and closer to that line, what you're going to see happen is these little short fibers are going to start breaking away. And this allows you to get extremely precise. You just keep planing until they, they'll disappear first, and that'll leave you with a little gap. And then you just keep going until eventually that gap will close and the end of the board will sit tight to the plane. Now I'm going to retract the blade, pull it in a little bit so I can sneak up on this. A little more yet. I can still see a little bit of a gap. Now that looks good. And you can always turn it over and check. And if you can't see any remnant of the line, then you're pretty much guaranteed that's where you want to be. Sometimes the question is asked, how much of a cut do I want? Well, you may notice that when you're planing the long grain, blade exposure that works really well on the long grain or the edge, often isn't enough to get much of a shaving on the end. That seems
seems to be hardly cutting. So I'm going to come in here and take a little more, or add, uh, expose the blade a little more. Now you can feel it cut. And you want something that is comfortable, easy enough to push through so you have lots of control. I'll give you an example of something that's too much exposure, or too much blade. Now that's really hard to push and I don't have a lot of control. I'd much rather back that off to about a quarter of that amount and I can go in, as long as the blade is nice and sharp, I can go in and be as precise as I need to be. It's like that. Here's a way of telling whether or not your blade is parallel to your sole. If your, the end of your board is pretty close to being square and you're about to plane the end of it, but you're going to flip it over, pull it away from the fence to cut your little chamfer. If you look at that line left between the two surfaces, in other words at the end of your chamfer, if it's not perpendicular to the end of the board, chances are your blade is a little out of square or not parallel to the sole. So the way I would read this is it's cutting on a bit of a slope. Now I just made that cut like that. That means I need a little more exposure on the top. So what I would do is push the lateral adjustment lever down, go in and do that again. And now that's closer to being square across the end. Something else that I find helps when using a shooting board is to take a clamp and just clamp that to the front of your bench. Make sure the clamp's not stick in, in, in your way. But now when you go in and you're working with this, it's far less likely to move around and I find it just a lot easier to go in there and do what I gotta do without having this shifting on me. Now the final tip is a little bit of a double-edged sword because it tends to uh, attract dust Every once in a while I've got to go in and clean that track. But just like plain wax working well when planing a board, if you go in and just put a little bit of wax on that side, then when you rest it on there, you'll find that that moves so much easier. Now the only downside is it has a tendency to build up on you and sawdust gets in there as well, but just a quick clean up and it's good to go. Uh, if you like my work, if you like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. And I've always said, better tools make it a whole lot easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools, and also talk to you about our online and in-person workshops. Good luck in your woodwork.